Hey guys, this is Tomek. In my previous video I was talking about the stateful application in Kubernetes. So today I want to deploy WordPress, which requires both a MySQL endpoint and also some kind of storage for the configuration files, etc. So let's get started. Uh, to speed it up a little bit, I already have prepared a Kubernetes cluster for myself. If you don't know how to do it, uh, browse through my channel, there are videos about that. Uh, let's review the environment. I've got uh, one cluster with three worker nodes. All of them are ready. That's good. And the other uh, preparation I did was with the database. So uh, we need some kind of uh, a database. I used uh, Cloud SQL for that. I've created the instance called uh, wp-db. It's quite simple. Few clicks. I will utilize internal or the private IP address for the connectivity since uh, both my Kubernetes cluster and my SQL instance is in the same uh, network, VPC. I already created user, which I will use WP user. You can easily create additional users if you wish. And let's put that all in some kind of notepad so we know what we need to configure so the database internal or the private ip address username is wp user and the password i said was change me of course in the production environment use more complicated passwords let's get going i decided in this video i will not utilize any existing yaml configuration rather show you how we can create it by yourself so let's first find an image we can use i will use official docker hub image called wordpress uh, and let's see how we can configure that so there are some supported tags and scroll down yes there is an information how to connect to the database and that's quite uh, important we need environment variables for host, user, and password. That's the minimum we need. So let me put that in my notes. I need WordPress DB host, WordPress DB user, and WordPress DB password. Nice. And the last thing I think we have to know is where the volume should be mounted. So let's uh, browse through the documentation on the Docker Hub. And there is an example for the volume mount. So let me copy that as well. All I need is the location. Okay, so I think I'm all set. So let's start with creating the volume. For that, I will create persistent volume claim and I will get the definition of YAML file from the official Kubernetes documentation. By the way, I've created separate video regarding that, so you will find the link in the description if that's something new for you. Let me search for persistent volume. And on the right hand side, uh, let's search for the section persistent volume claims. I uh, will utilize uh, option to auto-generate persistent volume based on the persistent volume claim definition. Uh, that's something I also uh, discussed in a separate video. Uh, search for the link in the description of this one. All right, so we've got our YAML copied. Uh, let's open, uh, let's create a new folder WordPress and create the file inside of that called pvc.yaml. By the way, you might notice I haven't copied the whole example. I just copied uh, the bare minimum I need. So I need the definition with size 8 gigabyte, which is good. Probably more than I need, but uh, that's good for the example. And let's uh, let's apply the changes. So kubectl apply minus F on the whole folder. So in the future, I will just run the same command. And the PVC is already created. By the way, the editor you see have auto save option enabled. That's why the file is auto saved. As you can see, my claim is already created with bound status, and I've got persistent and I've got even volume name. This volume name was auto generated for us. And if you are wondering what that is, this is actually a persistent disk created in the Google Cloud platform for us. So if we navigate to the disk section you can find there is a persistent disk with size of 8 gigabyte and this disk will survive even if our application will crash and will have to be recreated. Anyways, let's get going. Uh, the next thing we can do is actually create the, um, the YAML definition for our WordPress deployment. So for that, I uh, will use the imperative command with kubectl create deployment. Uh, let's call it WordPress and it lets use official image with no tags, just WordPress to make it simple. I will use dry run option, so it will not create the object, rather uh, create the definition of the YAML file. Perfect. So if that works, uh, let's uh, redirect the output to the file called deployment.yaml. 
All right, so we've got our file uh, created and we can edit the file to add, for example, our persistent volume claim. So how you can do that? You can actually navigate back to the documentation page for the persistent volumes and find the section uh, a little bit lower, claims as volumes. And there is a nice example of how to mount the volume to port. Of course, we've generated deployment definition, not the pod definition. So we will have to think about the indention to make sure it's under template uh, level. So we've got our volume mounts with the correct volume mount path that we need. That's perfect. And uh, let me copy that. And let's paste that. As I said, that's the deployment. So we will have to search for the section for template. And let's paste, paste that uh, for our um, on the container level first. So to fix the indention, let me just uh, put extra one. The volume mount seems okay. It's under container and the volumes should be under spec for the template. So one more now. Now it's perfect. Uh, you can review that to be sure. Uh, you can even compare that with the uh, example in the documentation, but now it's perfect. So let's review what we've got. Uh, the claim name is actually the same we use for our PVC, so we don't need to adjust that. And the uh, volume name MyPD, that's fine as well. If you want, you can change it, but that's okay. The mount path is actually the one we need for our WordPress, so happy coincidence here. Okay, so our volume will be mounted and that's superb. And the next thing is to connect our container to the database. We could specify the values directly into our definition, but since this is uh, sensitive data with login and password, let's create a secret which is created for that kind of data. So let's search for secret in the documentation and find a way how we can create a secret uh, with the literal values directly from the command line. So there's a nice example over here. Let me copy that. And I will go back to the Cloud Shell, open terminal, and uh, just modify this, uh, this command. So let's clear the screen, paste the command. I don't need a section for password right now. And let's change the section for the username. So username is the key and the value is WP user. And that's the name of our secret, which is fine. You can change it, but you don't have to. Uh, let me go to the next line since this will be a longer command. And the, sec the second key we want is for our password. So let's call the key password and the value is change me. And the last key we want is for the database address. So let's call that address and uh, give it a value of the IP address. That's the private IP address for our a SQL instance and that's it. You can review the uh, you can review the secret with kubectl describe secret and specify the secret name uh, to see how many keys are defined into the secret. So we've got three address, password and username. Now we have to translate them to the environment variables for our container. How to do that? Let's go back to the secrets documentation page. And under secret as using secret and section using secrets as environment variables. So perfect. That's what all we need. So we've got the example on the pod definition again is under container section. And there's a, a secret username, for example, with name my secret. That is the name of the secret and key username. So the first one is a good example uh, to edit that further. So let me copy the whole section. And let's go back to our YAML definition for the deployment. Uh, let me close terminal so we've got better view. And that's under uh, container level. So let's paste that just to make sure the indention is correct. So this is still under container level. Let's fix that. And now much better. You can always navigate back to the documentation or to other example just to compare if your indention is correct. I know it might be a little bit complex at the beginning, but once you understand the structure of YAML files, it just makes sense. Okay, so let's adjust the values. So let me first create a value for the WordPress DB user. That's the name of my environment value. Uh, the secret name was uh, dev db secret. That's the one we've created with the command line. And the key we use for the username is username. So that's good. Let's copy the whole section for another one. Another one, let's do that for the password. 
and uh, let me adjust the name and the name of the key the name of the secret is the same and the key used was password and the third value is for the wordpress db host so let's copy the section again or paste the section again adjust the name and adjust the key and yeah the key was address and well that's it our deployment is is fully ready uh, so it wasn't that complicated, was it? We've got our uh, DB definition, we've got our uh, volume amount. Uh, we can review all the keys, all the names we use just to make sure we didn't do any typo. And once you are confident that everything is fine, let's go ahead and execute the command. So uh, I will apply the changes on the folder to make sure all the changes are applied in my cluster. WordPress apply minus F on the folder. And now our deployment is ready and we can sneak peek with watch minus n1 kubectl get all to check the status as you can see our port is still being created it might take a little bit longer since that's the first time i'm doing that so the wordpress image has to be actually downloaded and after some time i think it will be less than a minute the container should be in the running state or the port should be in the running state once this is done i will expose the deployment to the external world using service with the type of load balancer so let's do it right now kubectl expose deployment and the name of the deployment was wordpress uh, we need to specify the type load balancer will give us external ip address and the port which is port 80 and to have more of a declarative approach, let's do dry run and uh, redirect the output to the file. So that's our service definition and let's, start, let's redirect that to service.yaml in the same folder. Now to apply the changes, again, I will execute kubectl, kubectl apply minus f on the folder and the service is created. We can sneak peek the progress again with watch minus n1 with kubectl get all. And as you can see, external IP for the WordPress services is still in pending state. So that will take another minute or two before this is ready. But in the meantime, since our pod is already running, it should already establish connection to the instance of the DB and create the database. So let's check it out just to make sure this is working fine. So let me navigate to the SQL section. Let's do, let's use the search option and my instance and when I navigate to the database section I, sh I should see database WordPress and voila it's there so I'm pretty confident everything will work fine let's see if we've got our external IP address ready it is so let me try to copy that and access it and we expect to see the installation page for the WordPress and there it is. So let's uh, accept the English version. Let's give it some title, test site, username, and the password. Of course, use something more complex in your environment. Uh, let's provide some dummy email address for now, since I will delete this instance after the video. And let me install WordPress. It shouldn't take long. And success, we can log in to the backend of our WordPress. Uh, providing username and password and voila we are in so simple as that of course uh, using a free node kubernetes cluster just to deploy single wordpress uh, instance doesn't make much sense but that's just the proof of concept how to do that or if you've got access to the kubernetes cluster how you can do that let me uh, delete the instance so no one will feel like trying to hack in knowing the password and yeah thanks for watching i uh, hope you enjoyed that uh, subscribe to the channel and check out my channel for other videos regarding kubernetes google cloud storage and other uh, it stuff